You know, the, the Earth mm. Great Pretends to Ink album mm -hmm. had all the crew on it and Jar was in the middle and mm. Shanti and they had that big banner on the street. Mm. And I walked past then what was Tower Records. Mm -hmm. I walked past it and I heard this song and I heard my voice on the <sighs> hook. And I walked into Tower Records in Times Square and they had all the banners there everywhere. It was like the biggest promo. Mm. And I picked up the album and I looked on the back and I went through all the credits and there was nothing. No. That's and my fucked. heart sank. Yeah. But you live and learn. What if you were to bump into any of them now? Like you're in a place of such fr fruitfulness that it could really be easy. I'd love to get Irv in my kitchen and I think I'm gonna. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna totally. what are you gonna serve him? Totally. <laughs> Poison. Killer killer podcast. Killer killer official dot com. Street culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer killer podcast. We're here. <laughs> It don't get better than this. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast. Here we are again. It's that time. Subscribe, share, tell a friend to tell a friend. Uh, the street culture is real. And if you want it real, go to the Television app. Free download, iPhone, Android for your street culture sports. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear from streets to stage. Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. We have a very special guest here today. I don't even know where to be. I mean, apart from being a, a confidant and dear friend of mine for decades now, um, she's had many lives, many lives, uh, from working alongside Incognito with our dear friend Bluey to uh, being signed, published, and uh, magnified um, and amplified with her albums and music um, to then work alongside me for many a year, Spit Kingdom Hold Tight. Woo! And now... Uh, <laughs> Flourishing in New York alongside a plethora of special guests, ranging from Papoose to Styles P to Remy Ma. It's all going off in a <laughs> vegan Soulicious, which is her new platform. Amazon Hold Tight. We have Charlize Rookwood inside the place. You're so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was freestyle. I don't need to do that. I to do. <laughs> you haven't changed one bit. <laughs> That was a lovely intro. Yeah, well, it's the truth, isn't it? I mean, l listen, she's been out in New York. There's a lot of things going on over there for a good reason that, you know, you may not have been privy to such awesomeness that uh, Charlize is up to. If you haven't checked Vegan Soulicious, this is her new platform. And this is kind of a debut for you in the UK, isn't it? Let's be it honest. It is, it is. I've been in the States. It feels like forever now. Yeah. feel a bit disconnected from the UK. Mm. But now... I don't know if everyone... I haven't seen him in how long? <laughs> at least 11, 12 at years. At least 11, 12 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. today we've met for the first time. I so know. I'm still giddy. <laughs> I've been around you for like 45 minutes now. I haven't had time to... this effect on I people, haven't had time it? to calm down yet. So I'm still just like... It's so funny when, when oh, I see babe. you, because obviously the social media aspect of what you're doing now, and guys, I urge you, check out Vegan Soulicious. It, it, it's so... Uh, well refined and geared towards the the, the food culture mm. that New York really, you know, we pay homage to it in the rest of the world because you know these guys they create fast foods and yeah. and all that stuff. But you're really pushing against the tide on that. Uh, little people they don't know. Little do they know that you are were a musician first. You were massive part of the uh, UK tapestry uh, from songwriting and everything. Yeah, it's been mad. has not it? Yeah, it's like a, it's not a part of my life that I've forgotten, but mm. I think when you delve into like a new chapter in your life, you just really home into that. Mm. And I don't really get to talk about no. that stuff much, but now I'm here with you. <laughs> We're talking I'm about like, it. I'm like, what else are we talking about? Let's get into Let's it. Let's get into it, babe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I want to know, uh, first of all, I do want to know about Vegan Soul Issues because this is street yes. food magnified for specialities and vegan uh, uh, yeah, consumption. So so talk to me about the what's the premise behind all this? Okay, without, without getting too morbid and getting too long. Yeah. Okay, so, oh... Let's make it nice and short. Let's do a recap. So my dad had stomach cancer. So we're going back nearly 11 years now. Mm -hmm. So it was my dad, three siblings, all cancer, and we lost them all back to back over about three years. Wow. And that 
whilst we were trying to kind of save my dad holistically, because yeah. that was my dad's Jamaican, I tall, he's like, I'm not dealing yeah. with the pharmaceuticals, you yeah, know, yeah, that yeah. Jamaican yeah, yeah, generation. Yeah, yeah. Big it up. So we tried to do it holistically. And whilst I was uh, on that journey, I started delving into just what food is really doing. You mm -hmm. are what you eat. Mm -hmm. um, that opened up a whole new world for me. We didn't save my dad, but it definitely saved me because it gave me a whole new awareness. <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't a bad eater, mm. um, but there are so many things that we kind of just don't realise are having huge effects on us. Mm. So Delta, doing that whole investigation of just you are what you eat and I just knew once we had like family member number four, I was Man, like, that's crazy. yeah, I was like, you know what? And then it, it was a huge pattern forming. Yeah. And uh, we were told that my family has Lynch syndrome, which is hereditary cancer. Okay. But it's kind of geared towards the bottom half of your body. and Which you, is stomach. Which is stomach. And if you've had a parent that's had it, the most prone person to get it is your child, and it's mainly in female. Right. So that would be me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. And I like to say this. I could go out tomorrow and get knocked over. Yeah, totally. Right? Caveat. Yeah. I could wake up tomorrow and get some kind of disease and get mad sick and pass. It yeah. doesn't mean because I'm vegan that I'm invincible. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But there was just some real obvious shit. Yeah that I knew I had to take care That's of. That's incredible that you clocked it. And I guess it becomes your life mission, doesn't it? It does. And I was, uh, you know, when my dad passed, I was like late 30s and I knew I wanted to have a kid. So when I had my daughter, when I knew I was like, you know, my daughter was intentional and planned. Mm. So I was like, okay, I want a kid. Yeah. I'm going to have one. Here we go. Mm. I'm pregnant. I'm going to have a vegan pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go completely plant-based mm -hmm. and I'm going to have a vegan baby. And that's when I made the huge shift. Because like, if there's anything that I'm going to learn from a very tragic story, yeah. I'm going to have to turn that into a positive. Yeah. And I always say my dad, my dad's passing and his siblings, those were all blessings. They were gifts. So yeah. what are you going to do with that? Yeah, totally. You're going to run with it and you're going to share it and you're going to try and just implement those things into your life and... Mm. So, you know, so, so their passings were not in vain. Mm. So that was the reason why I made the abrupt transition. Mm. That was the first part of the whole vegan lifestyle. Not even vegan so delicious. She hadn't, she hadn't arrived yet. Mm. I was still living here mm -hmm. at the time. She mm -hmm. came when I moved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, a lot of people go through stuff. You know, life is what happens. And some people have these responses that... that <laughs> You know, I think they, they f fall into certain holes and scenarios and they feel like they can't climb out of that. Mm. Um, I think your response to that was one of complete and utter empowerment and grab, let's go. Like, 100. Because if you don't try and fix it, your family timeline, you know I mean, generations to generations come will thank you for it. and generations. And, you know, I need my little one to fly the flag. Yeah. You know, we have to make just those, ch those changes in general all around yeah. the world. And it's not just food, it's everything. It's environment, it's, it's everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so if I can contribute a tiny little bit towards that, yeah. I'm like, I'm happy. Yeah, that's hard. Oh, that's so sick. Um, <sighs> there is... This could be spicy. It's not spicy. So keep the cool people. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> it's so silly. But, uh, right, so we all know that... There's there's certain levels of veganism, right? Whereby, I mean, back in the day, when people said vegan, it was like literally we're taking the piss out of like, oh, what you you just you eat, eat celery? Yeah, you eat celery. And yeah, you like your lettuce, do you? I just have a salad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So nowadays it's a whole lot different. Like there's an industry, right? And mm. there's a pendulum that swings on either side. So I would say at the moment, perhaps, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the mm. pendulum is kind of in that industry intermittent halfway house where it's like okay there's enough people eating vegan food there's enough people eating meat and it's all nice and healthy from an industry but yeah, sometimes if that pendulum swings too far then it does the complete opposite of what mm. uh, of what people are fighting against mm. do you know what i'm saying mm. so 
And I only say that from an observation. I think America's got it a little bit more tapped in where they haven't been over-consumed by that immediate rush to get vegan food made. In the UK, it feels like, oh, there's a vegan everything now, to the point where it's like, oh, man, like, is that... What, what is that? Mm. <laughs> what is that we're eating? Mm. Because it tastes almost in, indifferent to anything meaty. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. What's your thoughts on that? Okay, so... I have... lot to unpack there. No, no, please. <laughs> I'm really glad you said that because this is a big... This is a big topic yeah. in, in my world. And I tell you what, I think um, the way, okay, so I'd say America has an amazing variety of vegan restaurants, more than here. <sighs> but the UK has the most amazing produce for shopping i landed and went straight to asda tesco and sainsbury's all in one hit mm. with my mom i'm not sponsored by any of those uh, uh, kind of, we, we might be i don't know <laughs> just keep it rolling just putting it out there um so when it comes to produce so america will do this they will have in all of their supermarkets say the equivalent to any of those chains they'll have like a the Beyond Burgers, the Impossible Burgers, and they're in every single supermarket. Now, the UK, which I much far more prefer, will have, Tesco will have their own line, their own line of all plant-based mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. Saints will do their own line. They don't buy in the, the two big brands that everyone's rinsing off. Yeah. So the approach here, for me, is much healthier. Yeah? By far. Well, you heard it if I see. By far. It's, it's real I just talk. think... I'm going to say European because I'm not just getting into the whole Brexit foolishness. Mm -hmm. I feel that we still have a softer approach mm. to food. If you look at like our guidelines and the things that we're allowed to have in just mm. drinks and America's off the chain, there are no guidelines. Mm, nah. Like yeah. there are no guidelines. Which makes it a bit lawless and a bit risky. Mm. With non-vegan food and then vegan food. Yeah. It's like it's still scary. But I have to say, and I get a lot of uh, pushback from the vegan community and I get a lot of hate because yeah. whenever I share, for example, uh, okay, I don't consume meat substitutes simply because I don't crave meat. I was more of a pescatarian my mm -hmm, whole life. Mm -hmm. But if I craved meat, I'd eat a meat substitute. Now you can have the argument of, yeah, well, it's in a factory and it's processed and it's da-da-da-da-da mm. and it's fake meat. Okay, but you're going to slaughter an animal. Mm. Mm. And that pain and trauma. Yeah. Because that's, that's the other side. And the of it chemicals as well. that are released yeah. into that animal. Yeah. First, you got that. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to process it and do all that anyway mm. and stick it in a plastic and stick it in mm. the shelf. So I'm just like, mm -hmm. let's weigh it up, people. And stop in a bunch of melts. Why are you picking exactly. on a fucking shark? Oh, I can handle them. I don't worry yeah. about them. They're not ready for me. <laughs> delete and block. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> delete, block, delete, block. Delete, yeah, I'll do it all day. <laughs> so my, I just, I feel that substitutes hold a really important place. Mm. Yes, they're processed, but whatever. Mm. Not everyone can just go from being a carnivore to now eating raw. Oh, I feel you. It doesn't work like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm with you. And that's when yeah. people start to feel ostracized. Yes. But, you, but my whole thing is... I just want to meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. My journey is different. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do like me. Like where, I, where I've been and where I've gone and how I got here is my own personal experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm comfortable and I eat predominantly raw. But that's where I am. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I do meal prep, like... Mm -hmm for people in the States. And I'm like, yeah, have the plant-based burgers, you know, a couple times a week and get your meat subs in with the intention to slowly wean you off and get you making your own out of quinoa or tofus. But you've got to start somewhere. Man, you put in so much you know? work. So you do prep for people? Because I also know that you do massive catering events and things like that. I've started up again, yeah. It's loads of COVID was like, Argh! but I've just started again now recently. We can't tell, can we tell who you've had. Doing do you want? Yeah. Who, do have you you, want? who have you done catering for? <laughs> who have you done catering for, Charlie? <laughs> you so who, so who have you done catering for, Charlie? Uh, so I'm doing, a, I'm doing stuff for Jim Jones right now. Yeah, I mean, a basic podcast, is it, friends? <laughs> Cool, carry on. And that was based on him. <laughs> I did some stuff for Dave Chappelle. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Donna Rawlings. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, do you know I mean? yeah so keep going. We'll pick them up later. <laughs> yeah, Drop so them. 
drop them. <laughs> so <laughs> doing some stuff with Apple yeah. and doing some products of Soho House, and we're just keeping it moving. Keeping keep it, it moving. We're just keeping it moving, babe. Let's uh, let's take it back. <laughs> yes, um, let's go back because there was a huge influence from your mother and and your father. That's what that it goes came from. Saying. 100. 100 percent, wasn't it? 100. You know, work rate and uh, big up yeah. to all the family. I know them very personally. Very good people. Yeah. Amazing peoples. Um, and then come in, incoming. Uncle Bluey Incognito. Now let's the G. let's yes the G the G. Now for those you don't know Incognito, then you're on the wrong podcast. But mm-hmm. it, Incognito most definitely were a pioneering, um, almost like meter to anybody that is, is <laughs> gatewaying into the music scene. If you hadn't crossed Bluey at some point in capacity, then mm. you, you, you were most likely on the wrong path. He was a real one hundred, right? Yeah. Let's get into it. So, 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 how did this? Did he bring you in into the music scene, so to speak? You know what? He played a huge part just in in my musical journey. So, my dad, in his early early days, was a DJ. So, my dad had one of the first soul funk clubs in the seventies in Soho. Whoa. So, one of the first cl- black club owners. So, he came from Jamaica when he was eight. And just hustled, mad poor. I didn't know that. Yeah, That's like incredible. homeless. My dad was sleeping in movie theaters under the seats. Like, yeah, he had a cra- goosebumps. That's yeah. so good. He had a crazy, crazy ride. And um, I share something with you. He used to have. Um, so, do you remember? I don't know what it is now because I've been to the West End in such a long time. But Tottenham Court Road. Yeah. There used to be a Virgin Records there. Yeah. I don't know what it is now. I think that's a McDonald's now. Yeah, yeah I know. Oh, fucking. Crying shame. Can I say fucking? Yeah, yeah you can say it's your podcast, dog. Fucking yeah, that's what, well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so that used to be called West Point, and it was an indoor flea market. It was a vintage market. Wow. And the whole thing was, you know, it's massive. The whole yeah. thing was open all the way, and you would basically go there, pay a bit of money, set up your stall, and bring on my... And my dad used to go to New York and get second-hand Levi's and just fill up his suitcase in the 70s, bring him back, set up a table. And he had a friend. I'll say his name at the end. So mm-hmm. he had this mate. And they would always be next to each other. So his mate had vinyls and my dad was a DJ. So he was like, yeah, I want to be next to him. And I got my Levi's and my dad was a dancer. So they used to set up and you do, you get coffee today. I'll get coffee tomorrow. And they did this for like a year together. And that friend that was next to him that had his second hand vinyls was Richard Branson. And that, Mad. and that turned into his first flagship store of Virgin Records many years later. Stop it off. Babe, you couldn't make that shit up. <sighs> yeah. Wow. They were both hustling. Wow. On two wooden tables. Wow. Yeah. And then I ended up being Richard's first flagship store. And then, I mean, the rest is history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Virgin. The rest is history. And I've been my whole life waiting to bump into him and it's never happened. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, Richard, do you remember? <laughs> but. Yeah, it's bonkers. I mean, uh, it's just a matter of time where you're going with vegan soulicious. Yeah. To be fair. Yeah. So that hustle mentality that I have, I don't even know what we were talking about and how we even got into this, but that whole hustle mentality, that grind, yeah. I definitely got Come from my dad. Bit, yeah. 100, like, turn nothing into something. So. And I, and I would imagine the music as well. You must have been completely one hundred. So my dad was a DJ. So I was when my and my dad was the chef in the house. My mum couldn't cook when they met. They met when they were like fourteen, fifteen. Mm-hmm. And my dad taught my mum how to cook. But my dad's whole preparation first was mm. music has mm. to get set. We lived in in a in a little flat in a block estate in Chinkford in East London. Mm-hmm. It was like this small, and mm. we lived in one room. And my dad was like, music first, get the vinyl one, yeah. set the vibes, and Otis Redding, Curtis Mayfield, and now I'm going to start cooking up some Jamaican food. And then my uncle Bluey would then rock up, because he's my mum's little brother. So he would rock up every Sunday, because he's hungry. Mm-hmm. We're poor, no one ain't got shit back then. <laughs> and he was in the beginning of Light of the World was before Incognito. So Light of the World was the band that he had before Incognito. Wow, okay. And there were some great music, musicians in there so he'd rock up on a Sunday my mum's little brother he's hungry and he wants to see what vinyls my dad's got if you speak to Bluey he'll always refer back to my dad 
having the best final collection and opening his ears up to mm. some of the greats. So Blue would come, go through the vinyl connection and mm. just listen and eat some food. And I got that whole that whole ambiance. It's the same way that I cook. Music first and then let's get into the food. Mm. So it all makes a full circle. It really does. You know? Yeah, and it, it makes a full circle. And even though I, even though I was born in East London... When you walked into my parents' house, it was like you were still walking into a house in the Caribbean. It still felt like you mm. were walking into Mauritius and Jamaica, but you were in East London. Mm. So that whole kind of um, essence of just how I... I'm just really kind of just strict on keeping my culture mm. in what I'm doing in the States is, is super important. Yeah. And it's really helped with making me stand out from the rest because... Yeah. You know, anyone can go on and make some vegan meals, but it's more than that. And also it's really interesting, like, the way... F there is a correlation between the way you prep food to the way you prep a song. Absolutely. You know I mean, from songwriting and, you know, it's just... Everything is a process that it, it takes a... It's method, isn't it? 100. I know when I eat something, if that hasn't been handled with love, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can feel it. It's energy, right? Same music. It's energy. It's it's gonna sound mad, and people will be like, "Why? Why are you holding the banana like that? Like on into it? Why are you peeling it like that? Because I'm feeling it. Yeah. And if I feel it, and I'm transferring this energy yeah. into this food, yeah, yeah. and I'm giving it to you with love, then that's going in with love. Right in. Hell yeah. <laughs> so that's <laughs> that's that's my approach. Yeah, hundred percent. That's my approach. Yeah. So, yeah, so Bluey was, uh, so my mum, my dad, music, my mum was a model, uh, and then Uncle Bluey got, you know, incognito, got bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. And as a kid, um, I grew up in studios, just sitting on the floor, just watching him. Mm. Really little. Studying. Just, just studying. And just because he used to look after me, he picked me up from school on some days when my parents were working or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and he'd come and pick me up and give me a piggyback back from school, and we'd go to the studio, and I'd be sitting there, and now looking back at it, you know, George Benson swans in, mm. Anita Baker swans in, because Bluey initially, first and foremost, is a songwriter. Yeah. And people don't realise he's written for the greats. Yeah. Uh, Jill Scott, yeah. like, the list goes on and on and on. He's written for everybody. Um, and obviously, Incognito is its own beast. Just a beast. You might not see them in the charts, but they're touring the world constant. Constant. Blue notes to, you know... Constant. To... Japan, constant. Yeah. And, um, BB King. Exactly. And like exactly. And, you know, Ronnie Scott's yeah. residency. Yeah. Like, it's like, it never, real ever... Shit. It, like, real shit. Like, 21-piece band. Mm. It's, it's no fucking joke. Yeah. So growing up around him and watching that and just having all that access and not realising... What's actually mm. happening? And my parents were very open and free. Mm. I grew up in a very free household. Mm. So by the time I kind of hit 14, 15, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm either going to go down the fashion route like my dad, because by then my dad was working with Vivian Westwood and he had like shops on King's Road. And wow. So he was like doing all the clothes shows. So he was killing it. He was doing the clothes for the MC Hammer tours and the Bobby Brown tours. So I was hovering around all of that as a kid. Madness. And then I knew I was an artistic child, loved writing poetry, and then Bluey started getting me to kind of turn my poems into songs because mm. he would be like, this could... But Get, I was yeah. quite a shy child. Mm. I, and I still am. Mm. Um, so he got me in the studio. I wanted to do some backing vocals. I'm like, he's like, it's just me and you. Like, okay. And I'm comfortable around mm. him. So I started doing my first kind of BV recording with my Uncle Bluey when I was a teen. And then I remember I got this call from a friend and she said, look, there's this thing happening and there's an open audition to join a girl band. And I thought, okay, all eyes won't be on me. Mm -hmm. That sounds cool. Didn't know anything about this girl band. So I said, Bluey, there's an audition. Like, can you come with me? He's like, of course. 
And he said, what are you going to sing? I said, I don't know. And he said, well, you know, he said, you, you sing that Brownstone song, like, if you love me, you mm. sing that really good, like, inside. He goes, just drop that. Just mm. drop a mm. verse and a chorus of that, a cappella. I said, OK, cool. He goes, let's practice it a bit in the studio and let's roll. So Billy comes with me to ZTT office. <laughs> and I walk in and uh, a and everyone's there. And um, Shazne and Melanie Black from All Saints are sitting there. Go on. I'm auditioning for yeah. All Saints. Stop it. So I'm like, okay. So they're like, yeah, you know, sing. So I sing the Brownstone song and they're like, yeah, you're in. I'm like, okay, I'm in All Saints now. <laughs> that was so bonkers and so surreal. Yeah. So we get right into the studio with KG. We start writing with Carl Gordon. <laughs> By that time, when I joined the band, budgets had been blown. Like, mm -hmm. I came in right at the end. Yeah, there yeah. was no money. I, there was no nothing left. Mm. We were trying to kind of recycle what's left. Mm. And I got a little frustrated of course. with that because I came in at the tail end. Yeah. I didn't stay for long. The girls were lovely. I just was just like, this is a different kind of grind. And it wasn't my band, so I understood why they were fighting for it. But I just kind Last of... Last one in, first one out kind of thing. Kind of vibe. Yeah. And then um, I left and then the Appleton sisters joined. <laughs> and then that whole thing just totally blew up. Mm. And I was like, that's what it was meant to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was meant to be. So that was the beginning of me being thrown into major label madness. Mm -hmm. And then because I got a taste of that, I was like, I really enjoyed writing. That was the one thing I really enjoyed the most out of that whole process with All Saints was being in the studio. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm going to roll with that. So I just started writing more and more and more. And then Bluey got me in more and more and more. And then I started writing bits for Incog. Mm -hmm. And then it just became the rhythm and the pattern. And then before I knew it, this was my life. Yeah. Like this, this was it. Yeah. And uh, toured for years and years of Incog. Mm. That was the biggest, like, massive musical education. Mm. Touring with Incognito Don't is a it. whole different ball game. I remember one year we were in Japan. And in Japan, you do seven days straight, blue mm. note, two mm. shows a night. Yeah, yeah, standard. Yeah, each set is two hours. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. an hour break in between, back yeah. on. And um, that was a a wonderful kind of baseline because it doesn't get any harder than that. Yeah, yeah. Touring doesn't get any harder than incog touring. People don't realise yeah. there's touring and there's touring. Yeah. And when we're saying you're doing 15 songs, you're doing 15 songs. Yeah. And um, we did that for years, like Stevie Wonder, like rocks up on stage, like oh, in Blue it. Note in Japan. Like the whole thing was just like can't madness. Deal with it today. It's just too <laughs> the whole thing was crazy. <laughs> so that was I did that for years, off and on. Um, I was always mm. a backing vocalist, never did any lead stuff, and always ended up being kind of the session backing vocalist in the studio. Mm. So that was beautiful because that. That kind of was, that was all I really needed as mm. an artist. Um, I didn't want anything more from mm. it. I just, I never craved to be the solo artist, although labels wanted me to mm. be mm. that person. And then um, Simon Cowell's people reached out to me and they were like, you know, Simon heard something that you did and he wants you to come down and do a showcase. Like, are you working mm. on anything? And I was like, I was at Monroe Studios mm. on Holloway yeah. Road. And I started yeah, to work crew, come on. Monroe, Hank. Yeah. So I started to work on solo stuff there. But it was real acoustic. I wanted to be, I don't know, I just wanted to, I was playing guitar. So I wanted to just go on stage with my guitar bare yeah. feet. Yeah, yeah. Totally, I and get just it. do some acoustic shit. Yeah. I didn't want to do dance routines yeah, just some and some wear crop tops. Shit, you know what I mean? just yeah, like, I just, just wanted to do, do some real do earthy naturally. shit. Yeah. But that wasn't what the labels wanted, especially then. Mm. Yeah. You know, little lights can go yeah, from yeah, East yeah. London. Yeah. They want you to just be mm. sexy and shit, yeah. and I wasn't really down for that. Yeah. So I did a showcase for Simon in his office, and, and he loved it, but he was just, he wanted me to be something else. Mm. And I just said no. no. Good for you. And that was that. Yeah. And um, I just literally threw myself into writing. Mm. You know, you network, you mm. circuit. I was unpublished for a long time, mm. but I was still 
flying to Norway and Sweden yeah. and doing stuff at the Hick Factory. That's right. And just writing for Kylie and just doing all that shit in and out, in and out. And that kept me afloat. Mm. Incog in between mm. kept me with the live as- aspect. So I still got that live music wow. thing in my bones. And then um, and then you came along. <laughs> He came yeah, along. Yeah, and we killed it. We Which is mad. How did we make that connection? I'm going to interview you now. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing, isn't it? Yeah, for how those... did you and I, how, how did those dots connect? How many years ago? 2000 and, must have been 2003, 2004. Yeah. I'm not even sure how that even came about. I don't even, I, I don't. No, it came through Universal. Was it? It was a session. It was a writing session. That's right. And they sent me into to yours, the dairy. into the dairy. dairy in Brixton. <gasps> that was it. And I came in and that's how I came into the session as and a writer did, from the Universal. The Jamie for... Campbell sent me to you. And we did this tune called Standing in the Rain, wasn't it? <gasps> wasn't it? Oh my that was it. So if you oh, want to check online, you can check out. That was goose, our first. I got yeah, yeah, Standing in the Rain. That standing was in the Rain. Yeah, which was on my second album. So we're getting very... Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> But yeah, you get it. If, you, if you're into any of my stuff, which I'm sure you are, you just go check it out. It's just standing in the rain. You can get yeah, it out on YouTube. Tune. Yeah, it was a tune. It was a tune. Not, they weren't ready for yeah, that. They weren't ready for that. That song was way ahead of its time. But it was the precursor to you coming on tour and being a front girl alongside yeah. me. And, and that, that wasn't meant to be it. I just came in as a session writer. Yeah. Um, but I immediately called you about two songs he, in and was just like, he yo. He was like, yo, yeah. do you want to join the crew? Do you yeah. want to join Spit, Spit Kingdom? Kingdom. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? What the, what? Because there yeah, was no but, girls but, in the crew. No, there wasn't. It was just the man's yeah, them. Just, yeah, it was a sound system, essentially. It was it? a sound system. A Spider J, MC Trip, yourself and me, and Digi yeah. Skeletric. Uh, Mixologist also of its time, yeah. uh, along with Porge One. James. Yeah, and James, Russian. Uh, but, you know, at, all of this, big up everybody, by the way. Because yes. um, <laughs> they do watch from time to time, big up the voice. <laughs> we haven't forgotten uh, Yes, but uh, it certainly is, uh, a, a, it was a movement, wasn't it? And It was beautiful. Um, what we wanted to do is kind of create this, you know, uh, I've never been a part of something like that. Yeah, that's so right. I didn't realise what I was getting into because I'd yeah. only been in the studio with mm, you, mm, mm. and we naturally gravitated towards each other. Yeah, um, musically, spiritually, yeah. it was just it was instant it was between you and I. You know what killed it for me, and this is when I knew you were the right, the right friend for the job. Oh, right, God. we are. <laughs> We're going on our way up to leave Liverpool or something, oh <laughs> and we didn't have any seats on the train. So, and you were getting your makeup done on top of the uh, the gear. Yes. On top of the uh, yep. um, stack. I, yep. I can't remember what stack it was, but I remember being on the train, shaking around, going all the way up to Liverpool, yep. and there was you doing your makeup on the set. And she, yeah. you're, you're like, no, "Don't worry about it. It's fine." I knew just right. I knew this is a war horse. She was knew exactly <laughs> what she was doing. A war horse. I tell you. I'm a hustler. I, yeah. don't, I don't need the frills. Yeah. I'm good. Mm, I am actually yeah. a tomboy, so yeah. and I, yeah. I'm not allowed to say those words anymore. Mm. Whatever, I'm mm. old school. Mm. Mm. I'm pretty much a tomboy, and I'm like, I'm all about the grind. Mm. Let's mm. just get it done. Mm. I don't need all the mm. all the extra all shit because you don't need that shit to get shit done. No. You and I know yeah. that too yeah. well. Yeah. So that whole so. spit kingdom thing, I hit the road yeah. with this crazy it's one. About four or five years, wasn't it? Four or five years, we hit the world, China, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. oh what my god, Europe, Austria, uh, all of it, yeah, everywhere. All of it. The only place we didn't hit together was the States. Yeah. But we ended up doing that, you know, independently. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Spit Kingdom was a a very crucial part, mm. a really crucial part of my life. Mm. Um, it's mad. Mm. Mad. <laughs> I'm just reminiscing <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, it's giving like me bloody off. hell. Yeah. I mean, I even drove the tour bus because I get motion sickness. Yeah, and here's a little here's a little <laughs> <laughs> It's a little bit of information that you vegan lot won't like. Um, this, this lady was powered by Red Bull, like without question. And Even summer, like yeah, and whatever else, morning. Yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. else was in the Red Bull. Yeah, true, 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 true. Um, yeah. But it was a whole different life. And, 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 and I loved it. I loved every yeah, minute of it. Yeah. Vodka and Red Bulls all day long. But you were a driver mainly because of motion sickness. You couldn't be a... Yeah. And, and Red Bull was certainly the key to getting us down. I mean, we were on the enough. road constant. So, yeah. you know, it was like show, especially when we did all the uni stuff. Mm. It was like show, pack up, yeah, back yeah. on the tour bus. Sometimes Two a night. Like two a night. Let's go. Yeah. Like we killed it. Yeah. And then we did your big um your big showcase. Yes, at ICA, wasn't it? Yeah. That was amazing. That was amazing. With the big banner. Yeah. Oh man. <gasps> it was so good. <sighs> and, 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 a good and, day. Well, it's amazing because like it's very few people that can, you know, uh for, I can refer to in being like, yeah, this yeah. this it happened, you know, this happened. But meeting you. 
was one of the main reasons why I managed to create my album. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, of course. And because, the album. Exactly, yeah, because right. even though I, I was of Spit Kingdom, I was still doing a little bit of Incog in between. Uh. And then I went on tour with Incognito, and then when I was on tour with them in Japan, mm. then I got approached by Universal mm. Japan, and they mm. were like, do you want to do a solo album? Crazy. And then I was like, yeah, because I've got my crew that mm. I can make my album mm. with. Mm-hmm. And it basically was Spit Kingdom and Incog and a few others and mm-hmm. Dynamite MC and Scratch yeah, yeah, Perverts. Yeah, yeah. We were a family. Yeah. And they all came together and mm. produced my album, Pinky Ring. Yeah. Big up Plus One as well, by the way. Plus One. James Russian on the production. Neil, productions as James, well. yeah. what? Dynamite mm. MC, yeah. like the whole up, thing. Dude. Yeah. So, but my whole Spit Kingdom family, my Incog family, because Uncle Bluey produced some stuff on there mm. too, my whole. The whole family came in and, and mm. did that album. It's an incredible album as well. Yeah. It really was. Yeah, we had some politics at the end of it, but yeah. hey, yeah. Right. it's what it is. Uh, <laughs> Not mentioning no names, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but it is It is what it is. So Talk that about was, stealing um, thunder, my friend. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was incredible, but yeah. that was the only time I ventured into that whole solo life. Mm. But I didn't like being by myself. Mm. I didn't like it because mm. I came from the crew, mm. you know. I came from being with a massive mm. sound system. And then it was just me. I remember I went to Japan to promote the album and uh, something didn't feel mm. right. Mm. And when they, when Universal came, we had some other stuff happen, but when Universal mm. came back and said, like, would you consider like doing a second one? I was like, nah. No, thanks. I'm done. Mm. I realised that I do not want to be by myself doing this. Mm. I don't want it like that. So mm. that, was, that was the end of it for me. Mm. And I just literally was just doing incog stuff. And I was signed to Universal Publishing. So Jamie Campbell signed me. And when Jamie signed me, he sent me to New York to do some writing. (laughs) And I was writing for Ja Rule. I was in the 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 Murder Inc. era. Yeah, so that was like Murder Inc. um, in its peak. Mm -hmm. So I was in New York that summer in, they called it the Crack House. It is called the Crack House. Mm-hmm. And I was in there writing top lines and hooks. Crazy. And, um, and then the Earth Gotti Presents the Ink album came out, <laughs> went double platinum, wrote two songs on there and vocaled them and never got jack shit. What? Not even a mention. What? Uh, what it, it, it's it some, some snidey shit. They just didn't care. And I, can't, I couldn't sue Earth Gotti. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. There was a line of people yeah. trying to sue him for all sorts. So I had to just walk away and let it go. But do you know what? It was mad. I remember one day I was in Times Square and they had all the big street banners up. Like, mm. you know, the, the uh, mm. Great Pretense Inc. album mm-hmm. had all the crew on it and Jar was in the middle and mm. Shanti and they had that big banner on the street. Mm. And I walked past then what was Tower Records. Mm-hmm. I walked past it and I heard this song and I heard my voice on the <sighs> hook. And I walked into Tower Records in Times Square and they had all the banners there, everywhere. It was like the biggest promo. Mm. And I picked up the album and I looked on the back and I went through all the credits and there was nothing. No. That's and fucked. my heart sank. Yeah. But you live and learn. Yeah. I had a shady manager. Mm. I was just kind of out there floating. Yeah. It's okay, you know. I came back to London because I was living in New York for a little bit. I came back yeah. to London. I continued to write with Universal. Um, what do you... Oh, like, uh, so, yeah. yeah um, uh, ha, what if you were to bump into any of them now? Like, you're in a place of such f- fruitfulness that it could really be easy. I'd love to get Irv in my kitchen, and I think I'm gonna. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna totally. f- what are you going to serve him? <laughs> totally. Poison. <Yeah. laughs> you know, the, the uh, mm. Great Pretense Inc. album mm-hmm. had all the crew on it and Jar was in the middle and mm. Shanti and they had that big banner on the street. Mm. And I walked past then what was Tower Records. Mm-hmm. I walked past it and I heard this song and I heard my voice on the <gasps> hook. And I walked into Tower Records in Times Square and they had all the banners there everywhere. It was like the biggest promo. Mm. And I picked up the album and I looked on the back and I went through all the credits and there was nothing. No. That's and f- my f- heart sank. Yeah. But you live and learn. Yeah. I had a shady manager. Mm. I was just kind of out there floating. Yeah. 
it's okay, you know. I came back to London because I was living in New York for a little bit. I came back yeah. to London. I continued to write with Universal. Um, what do you... Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, how, what if you were to bump into any of them now? Like, you're in a place of such f fruitfulness that... It could really be easy. I'd love to get Irv in my kitchen, and I think I'm gonna. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? What are you gonna, totally. what are you gonna serve him? <laughs> totally. Poison. <Yeah. laughs> you know that the Earth Got It Presents Ink album mm -hmm. had all the crew on it, and Jar was in the middle, and mm. Shanti, and they had that big banner on the street. Mm. And I walked past then what was Tower Records. Mm -hmm. I walked past it, and I heard this song, and I heard my voice on the <sighs> hook. And I walked into Tower Records in Times Square and they had all the banners there everywhere. It was like the biggest promo. Mm. And I picked up the album and I looked on the back and I went through all the credits and there was nothing. No. That's and fucked. my heart sank. Yeah. But you live and learn. Yeah. I had a shady manager. Mm. I was just kind of out there floating. Yeah. It's okay, you know. I came back to London because I was living in New York for a little bit. I came back yeah. to London. I continued to write with Universal. Um, what do you... Uh, uh, so, yeah. yeah um, uh, how, what if you were to bump into any of them now? Like, you're in a place of such f fruitfulness that... It could really be easy. I'd love to get Irv in my kitchen, and I think I'm gonna. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what are you gonna, totally. are you gonna serve him? Totally. Poison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some jerk tofu with some poison. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Yeah, only you know joking, Irv. Yeah. Only joking. Well, maybe not. Um <laughs> you know what, if I'm honest, I don't even think of I don't with everything they had going on, I don't even think I was on the radar. No. It was probably so much going on. Too much going on. There was so much going on. And my manager really fucked shit up with that he was okay. like the catalyst of that whole thing falling apart because i remember we were about to shoot the video because one of the tracks that i wrote the hook on was going to be a single and it was jar and it was um black child mm -hmm. and they said we're going to shoot a video it's going to be real charleston black and white in like a blues club mm. and you're going to be on stage that was cool you know and yeah. the treatment was beautiful mm. and then I, my manager was like okay cool i'm going to speak to them and start negotiating and i said negotiate what I said, there's nothing to negotiate. Yeah. Just let me be in the goddamn video. Yeah. It's not deep, so bro. I didn't know. He went in <laughs> to Irv and was asking for this mad money. I was a no one to them. Uh, yeah. He went in asking for crazy money for me to appear in the video. And he fucked it up. Oh, and that's wow. when it went left. And that's where you can probably equate that a lot of things went yeah, south like that. Yeah, a lot of things went south like that. You know, when the wrong person's representing you. Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. So, yeah, that was that. And I, that was interesting. And but, then, uh, but you know what? With with this. You I know, have no regrets. No, because you can reapply all of this knowledge. We were talking totally. about this before we had a talk before we started. Because I never, I never got, I never got bumped again. Yeah, exactly. And this Moving is Moving forward yeah. from that. Yeah. In never happened yeah, again in right. anything in no, my life that's right and and you reapply you you recalibrate you get it all together and yep. you take stock and then you move forward with a gang of knowledge even if it's in a different context different yeah. genre different you know industry yeah oh. you, you apply it to your life what's it like when you uh you know you've always been privy to meeting heroes Chuck Khan for one of them do you know what I mean you're just like yeah I did backing vocals on her Here Comes the Girls tour it was her Lulu and Anastasia yeah so that's enough right you can't get more <laughs> peak than that yeah so when you're doing cooking for someone like Stars P or Papoose or, you know, I've yeah. mentioned yeah, yeah, like yeah. Where's your head? Because that's like your world's coming together. Yeah. That must be some next shit. You know what? It's interesting because um, obviously, so I moved to the States eight years ago and I knew that I wasn't, so my daughter was free. Big um, up Emmy. Big up Emmy. Emmy. She's next door. Um, so I knew at that point, I knew my focus was just creating a safe space for her in another country, leaving mm. family behind. Mm. And just, you know, making sure she had everything she needed. And I actually, I put me on a back burner and I went into, I went into mum zone. Mm -hmm. um, some may say it was a little extreme. Uh, I get that. Yeah. They, yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, 
definitely have a point. Um, but then when I found my feet in the States, it's a vegan solicious. This There was no major planning with this whole mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. It was literally, I was in the States the first couple of years. I didn't have a work permit, so I couldn't really do anything. And you can't muck around in, in America mm -hmm. if you ain't got a work permit. So I was just kind of just hovering and just making sure Emmy was good and just doing the whole family thing. Mm. And then when I finally got everything in place and I got my green card and everything was nice, I was like, okay. So I was already moving in really good circles. So Emmy's been at Alvin Ailey for seven years. So this is like the only black ballet school in, <laughs> in, in America. And she'd been there. And that school had some amazing families in it. So one of the first families in that school um, and our kids danced together for seven years was a woman called um, Chanel. Now, Chanel, which I didn't know at the time, happened to be the anchor presenter on the Today Show. But I don't watch daytime TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you so I had, I'm not, I just don't watch it. So I had no clue. I just mm. knew she was dope. We connected. Her, um, she was having some um, health issues with her throat um we started to unpack what she was eating and I started to kind of guide her because I was already vegan and I started to guide her a little bit with, mm. with food and homeopathic remedies because mm -hmm. she was going to get this major operation and I said well hold off for a minute yeah. let's just see because you're a vocalist as well so exactly you, so, so food, I'm like let's on. be real careful yeah. like what we're going to do here and in America they're very aggressive with treatment mm. there is no um Let's try the natural route initially. Mm. This doesn't exist. They d it just doesn't work together. It's like, let's just cut this shit mm. out and give you a whole bunch of chemicals mm. that are going to make you feel even sicker yeah. later on in life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry about none yeah. of that. Don't read the small yeah. print. Um, so I started helping her and then we started talking and she was just like, you know, what do you do? And, and we became friends. So that was that relationship, which was beautiful. And that's, it was just a sisterhood. Yeah, yeah. And then there was another mum called Tanya Moore. Her kids were there and her son had nut allergies. And um, we started talking and rapping and we came strong. Mm -hmm. So those are my two sisters that became my sisters. And mm -hmm. I started helping her, her son with um, substitutes for mm -hmm. nuts and mm -hmm. incorporating different things into his diet. He had eczema and I started to help her go through elimination of process of foods yeah, to help yeah, his yeah. skin. And we became sisters. And then I started, Instagram appeared. So I jumped on Instagram and just started doing plant-based food. And listen, when you live in America, it's a whole different ball game, Kels. Mm -hmm. Food deserts, people being placed in housings in a specific intentional way where you are set up to fail and die. It's not like here. Hmm. There is no social system. There's no signing on and there's no NHS. There's no free health care. So the struggle out there is different. So when I tell you the equivalent to the hoods here hmm. and the hoods there. Significantly for, different. Get it, babe. Wow. It's like it's so rich and it's so poor. Hmm. But it's all intentionally designed that way, and that's what's fucking scary. Yeah. Now I've been going to New York because my family were lived in the Bronx. I've been going since I was eleven, so I've kind of watched it develop and move and shift. And when I got there, I knew, wow, the kids are suffering. That's what it is. It's the Hisp the Hispanics and the Blacks, all the ethnics mm. are suffering in New York. Like the diet, everything. There mm. is no access. None. And there is no education. So there is no awareness. And I knew that I was privileged mm. when I got there. I was fully aware. Mm. Put my kids straight into a vegan mm. Forest Steiner school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who can do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I did that because I was like, I've got one. If I can do this, that's what I'm doing. Mm. But then I started dotting around all the schools. And then I started doing cooking classes, like vegan cooking classes yeah. for second and third graders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started doing it in some schools in Brooklyn, in poorer areas. And just like kids had not seen vegetables and fruit outside of a can. They had no clue what Where they the looked wow. what they looked like, peeled, unpeeled, coming out of the ground. They had no clue. It broke my heart, babe. And that's when I knew I've tapped into something yeah. here. I have to find a way 
to, without preaching and without them feeling judged, I've got to find a way to get to my people. Mm. So I started on Instagram and I started sharing mm. plant-based meals. Mm. But just food that they're familiar with, mm. food I grew up with, ackee, saltfish, mm. jerk, mm. you know, uh, stew peas, pea mm. soup, whatever it mm. is, curry goat, roti. I'm going to veganise all that shit that mm -hmm. I grew up with. And I'm just going to start playing around on Instagram and just start sharing it. And it started to go ballistic. And then I realised I'm onto something. And that wasn't the plan. And I started getting DMs. My kids lactose intolerant or da 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 da. What can I do? And it's all just ethnic, predominantly mums, black mums messaging me, crying out for help because the information is intentionally kept from you in the United mm, States mm, for a mm. specific reason because mm. they need you to be sick because mm. pharmaceuticals yeah. is just there's too much money yeah, involved. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your ass has got to be sick. Yeah. Children as young as nine have got diabetes. The fuck are we doing yeah. right and i got a kid yeah so i started to build this instagram thing i started getting really busy um and then chanel who was the anchor the host on the today show at nbc mm -hmm. started following me and she was like yo sis mm -hmm. what you're doing just keep doing it it's actually pioneering and that's all she would say she would just say Whatever it is that you're doing, mm. Charlize, mm. it's authentically you. Mm. Just keep doing it. And mm. I wasn't even really sure what it was I was doing it. I was just doing it. I was like, this is my little space. Yeah. This is where I can just release and share my passions. Yeah. Um, that's it, really. And then Tanya, who was, and I didn't know, but she was head of video at BET. We dropped the kids to ballet and we're sitting in a coffee shop and she's like, you do know what you're doing on Instagram is a cooking show, right? You do know that's what you're doing. And I said, yeah, I guess. And she's like, this, you need to develop this into something. You're made for it. You come from the music industry. You're used to being in front of the camera. You're creative. Mm -hmm. You need to turn so this. as well. Yeah. They're so positive. Just, you should do that. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> do you know right. I mean? yeah, she's like, that. you need to do something with yeah. this. She was like, would you be down? I was like, would I be down? You don't have to ask me twice. Yeah. So she went, how do you see it? And I said, well, I would love to get non-vegan celebrities in my kitchen just to prove a point. And I'd love to veganise all the foods mm. that I make and make it very casual. We're not preaching about the environment. Yeah. We're not doing none of that shit. We're just going to like catch yeah. up, eat good food and yeah. just vibe out like you've come to my house. And she said, well, that's an amazing concept. She's like, just give me a moment to sit with this. Okay. Wow. So we're just mates. I yeah. go to her house, she comes to mind, the kids hang out. We're not talking business when no, we see no, each no. other. It's a sisterhood. And then she says, right, I've done a deck. I'm going to email it to you. A deck of what? She goes, of your show. Wow. So she emails me this deck and she wow. goes, right, send me a list of who you want on your show. Sorry? <laughs> okay. So I'll write this list and send it to her. And she goes, right, I'm going to present this to BET next week to the head. Because I think the world, America needs this show. All right, then. Wow. I'm still just like, what? Yeah. She presents it to BET. They're like, fucking love it. We want to do it. Get ready to start filming in Viacom. COVID comes, the world shuts down. Uh, yeah. It's a blessing. Yeah. Well, because what's happened is you've... <laughs> I mean, it's a blessing. I mean, I lost many in COVID, um, family and friends, but a blessing in the sense of it wasn't time yet. Mm. It was too soon. Mm. It was too soon for me mm. for many reasons. So mm. everything shut down and I just said, all right, I'm going to pour my life into Instagram and mm. I'm really going to make this vegan soulicious platform. So yeah. I just went fucking ballistic. Yeah. Ballistic. <laughs> In so many amazing ways. I just went nuts. Yeah. And it wasn't just me cooking and sharing content. I started reaching out to yeah. other vegan platforms yeah. and plant-based news. They're the biggest vegan platform in the world and they're actually British. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I reached out to them and we started collaborating and then I started getting invited invited to be on panels and speak about you know, vegan parenting or yeah. a vegan transition. And I, my Mission brief, straight yeah, mission brief. Just started growing and growing and growing my my platform and my followers. And I've never posted with this 
intentional plan of this is going to trigger and get me more no. views or likes. I've never posted like that no. and I still don't. No. Um, and then I realised this silly voice, this speaking voice um, is very authentic in the mm. United States. Mm. Now, I didn't understand until I started getting the DMs. Your voice. Mm. Oh, my God. Can you speak more? Mm. And I tell you who played a big role in that. Go on. There's two people. So, my girl who was on here, Kelly. Uh, Kelly, Kelly LaRock. LaRock. Hold tight, Kelly. Now, our dads were best friends. They grew up together in the 70s, both dancers. So, me and Kelly go back to babies. Wow, okay. okay. And I saw her okay. on here, glowing and looking fabulous, Fabulous, darling. darling. Fabulous, love her. So, one day, Kelly DM'd me, and I, I did a voiceover on one thing. And she said, yeah, with an M&S ad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? She said, she said, Shah. You yeah. have to do that mm. more. I said, do I? She mm. said, yes. Mm. You have to voice over on your cooking videos mm. more. Mm. Look what happened when you voice overed on that one. Mm. Look at the difference mm. when you did music on that and your voice on that. Mm. And then, do you know Atheon Crockett, comedian? Mm. Uh, yeah, he um, was from Wild and Out, but yeah, actor. So Atheon yeah. reached out to me and he's in LA and he was like, yo, sis, mm. you need to talk more over mm. your videos. So between Kelly and Atheon, I started doing it more. Mm. And then I figured, and then I was like, okay, this is the niche. Yeah. i got to speak over my shit. Wow. And um, just make sure, you know, I love music. So when I'm cooking, mm. you know, music plays an important role. So I just incorporate all those things in the way that I want to and everything mm. that I present. And then COVID was still here. We were still in the thick of the mask wearing mm. madness. Mm. We still couldn't go into studios without masks. That's it. And then my boss left BET and went to I1 Digital. Now, I1 Digital are the biggest black digital platform in the world. They're bigger than BET. Wow. Um, and under their umbrella is Bossip, Hip Hop Wired, Cassius, all the other ones are underneath their umbrella. People wow. don't realize that. Wow. So she moved and she's like, she's now like head of VP of video there. Mm. And she took my project with her. And Fantastic. then she signed it there in COVID. Wow. And then in the midst of COVID, she's like, right, we're getting on set. Oh, she's like, right, this is who we got. You want Styles? We got Styles. We got Styles first. We got Queenie Green. We got Dean Edward, Darnell, Darnell Rawlings. We got all these people. I hit up some of my people. And she was like, right, we found this dope loft in Soho. Mm. Go take a look at it. Let me know how you feel. Let me know if it feels comfortable if you feel like this could be mm. you in your home because mm. you're going to shoot every single mm. one in this space and I walked in and I was like this is it done this is where I want to shoot and that was the beginning of then she's like what do we call the show and we're both on the phone like I don't know vegan so this is the black is a black vegan cooking show and we were like it's a black vegan cooking show done let's just Ding. keep it simple yeah it's for everyone but it is the black vegan cooking show and I wanted to be very intentional mm. with that. Mm. I just feel like, especially in America, there wasn't a cooking show, let alone a vegan cooking show, where African-Americans felt they had a safe place to land. Mm. And that's what I wanted to create. And I thought, right, if we get on the right people and some very unlikely guests. Yeah. Because it's all about opening up you know, the thought process. Mm. And when people see Jim Jones on there. Yeah, that's mad. And now I'm food prepping for Jim twice a week. And people are just like, Jim loved it. So if he loved it, yeah. then. It's co-signs, like co-signs. Raising awareness, right? You know, yeah. fans follow yeah. suit. For whatever reason it is you're following, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I just got to find a way to reach the masses. Mission briefs, you know? isn't it? It's mission briefs. Having yeah. a mission, having a North Star, having a reason to get up in the morning and do this. Thing. Yeah. You That's what, I mean? what it is. And then and then I did the Black Vegan Cooking Show, did the first season, rolled it out. It's still digital. Mm. You know, it's I, I, the, the mm. mission is to get to Netflix yeah. or Hulu, which yeah. I'm gonna. Yeah. But, you know, I needed to be seen. Yeah. And social media and digital platforms. I kind of think of a better way to be seen. And, yeah. you know, we just kept on rolling them out. And the more we rolled out, it was easier to get to certain guests. And then mm. guests started asking to come on. We love that. So, okay, yeah, <laughs> that's nice. And um, and that's when the whole thing just started to fall into place. And then Chanel, who was the mum, 
from mm-hmm. Alvin Ailey, who had the throat thing. Mm-hmm. She was like, wow, you did it, sis. I want you to come on the Today Show. Oh, yeah. When I got that email, I was in L.A., And I was speaking um, at the Vegans Women's Summit. And I got to my hotel and I checked my email and I saw an NBC Today Show email. I was like, I was like, oh, my God. Mm. I can't (laughs) open that email. (laughs) It looks too nice on the surface. I was like, what the fuck? Mm. And I opened it and it was like the producer, we'd love to invite Vegan Solicious to the Today Show to come in and do some vegan shit. I'm like, what? That three minutes. So I walk into studio, Kels, listen to this. <laughs> I'm still like, what? Yeah. Little me from East London. <laughs> so get to Rockefeller, standing outside like, okay. Mm. Get through security, go upstairs. And Chanel's like, yay! And I'm like, yay! And uh, what I'm walking yeah. into. <laughs> and she's like, she's like, you've got three minutes, but just work, work with me. We're going to run through it because I had to send in all my recipes. They pre-prep it because yeah, yeah. they have chefs on site. So they yeah. pre-make everything. Everything in a bowl. Everything yeah, as you do. everything's yeah. ready. Like, go, yeah. go, go. So yeah. you're going to do that. Then you're going to go to that. Then you're going to go to camera. Then you're going to present. And then we're going to run around and we're going to taste it. Wow. In three minutes. So we get in the studio. I'm in the green room and I'm sitting there. I'm fucking bricking yeah. it, babe. Sweaty palms. Bricking it it but luckily i'd done a whole season of um the black vegan cooking show so i'm good on camera mm. i'm seasoned again mm-hmm. i'm back in again mm-hmm. so i'm cool with, with yeah, that yeah 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 but i got three minutes and it's, it's very intimidating on the today yeah. show you know it's like going on the morning show it was yeah. the equivalent here um, with felix Schofield. you know yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, equivalent yeah. of those shows yeah. here or loose women yeah, or, yeah, yeah yeah and um i went in and i'm in the green room sitting there and then this guy walks in and he sits down next to me and he's like, oh, good morning. I'm like, hi, hey, today you on? I said, yeah, I'm on it, blah, blah. He goes, oh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on before you. But he's got his cap on and it's really mm. low. Mm. Oh, God. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just so in my zone trying to just yeah. control my nerves. Yeah. I can't really get into it with you, bro, yeah. whoever you are. Yeah. But you're on before me to so just go do yeah, your yeah, thing, yeah. innit? <laughs> so he goes into the studio and he's like, yeah, see ya. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, bye. Um, and then they call me and they're like, you're in studio two. So I'm in studio two and he's in studio one, but I am watching him. He takes his cap off and he sits down and he gets, they plug him in. He's on, it's Christian, it's Christian Slater. <laughs> it's like... No, not nerving at all. Nothing that would I'm ever like, excel oh, your nerves and, you know, nerve endings. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> fuck. That was Christian Slater sitting next to me. Now, I'm not the fan chick, but that was Christian Slater. <laughs> So I'm watching Christian do his thing and they're going like, Christian's going into the next segment. So he's now eating into my three minutes. So, so what, um, so you're going to be de- delegated even less time? Yeah, so I get two minutes because oh, Christian's, gone, Christian's gone over. Well, it's Christian Slater, so you can't stop him. And he was promoting something really big. So I'm like, it's cool though. I let him have was that. Was that dad manager of yours at that time? <laughs> just rolling in going, hey, listen, it's going to be extra money if, if you wanted to be on for only two yeah, minutes. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's Christian. So, you know, you can have it. Mm. And... Um, so he cuts and they go, right, studio two, camera roll. Mm. And I've got two minutes and we do it and I don't remember it. it. The whole thing's a oh, blur. Yeah, yeah. It's a roller coaster. But I watch it back and it was dope. And then and then my world turns upside down from being on the Today Show. Then I get book deals and all sorts of shit starts oh, rolling God, in. Oh, that's some coolest, coolest story shit. But I say no to everything. I turn everything down. I'm like, no, it's too soon. Mm. It's still too soon. And then we start filming the second season. Then we get the Amazon sponsored special for Remy Ma and Papoose mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for Christmas. So we film that and that goes bonkers. Um, and I'm still, I've got no agent. I've got no manager up until today. You're just working it. I'm just like, that person's going to have to be sent from another planet yeah, 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 yeah. in order to kind because of... Because you've cut your chops. You've built this up. Right. I know I need one. I need one or the other. Yeah. I'm fully aware. Yeah. But I'm just like, it will happen when it happens. Yeah. And I don't want to really dig one out. Mm. It will just organically, like everything else, yeah. it will just fall into place. Um, and then that episode came out of Remy Moore and Papoose. And that was like huge. Mm. So a year's gone by since I was on the Today Show. Then I get one of those emails again. NBC mm. today. And that mm. is a year since the last one. Mm. Oh, we saw your Amazon special. We 
would love for you to come on again and we'll talk a little bit about the Black Vegan Cooking Show. So good. I'm like, you're going to mention the Black <laughs> Vegan Cooking Show on daytime TV, like NBC? So I go in and I do it again. And, uh... <laughs> this is Charlize Rookwood, man. Then, like, you gotta believe it. Go on. then I get some real cookbook offers. Now, the reason why, okay, I can talk about this now because Good. by the time this comes out, Ooh. I've already shared it. Yes. Um. So I get. So there's this woman, right? Um, and she's my favorite um li- literacy agent. Yes. She's my favorite. But her books are always closed in New York and her books finally open. And I'm like, how do I get through to her? Now, it turns out that one of the mums from Emmy's school is her best mate. And she's like, have you ever thought of doing a a book, a cookbook? I said, I'd love to, but there's someone I'm trying to get to. Hmm. And she's like, who? And I'm like, well, Bridget. And she's like, Bridget from where? And I'm like, she's like, my best friend. Oh, yeah. It ain't what you know. Picks up the phone. Mm. Bridget, I want to introduce you to my friend. Da, 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 da. She's dope. Black vegan cooking show. Chef. Da, 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 da. Oh, I just want to introduce you. And that's my bit. Yeah, yeah. So she connects us and she's a little shot. I don't have any power over this. Bridget will make up her own mind. It might not be her thing, what you're doing. I said, that's cool. Mm. So me and Bridget get on the phone. After 20 minutes, she's like, let's do this. I'm like, okay. So she goes out and starts to shop this cookbook deal mm. for me. And um, I haven't spoken about this yet because no. I can't, but I oh, can fantastic. because but, but the timing is wonderful because yeah. we're pre-recording, we're darling. We're pre-recording, darling. This is official. This is part of, part of the uh, rollout yes, of promo, actually. Exactly. So she runs around New York and um, she's one of the best of wow. the best. Wow. And it was all about energy mm. and her and I just clicked. Yeah. She's a mum. We have a lot of similarities. Um, and she runs out and starts shopping me this cookbook deal. And uh, I have all these offers and I'm just like, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. I do a bunch of Zooms because they're still not doing like in-house things. And I get on this one Zoom. Get on two Zooms. I do one Zoom with Penguin. Mm -hmm. And I get off it and I'm like. Dead, not right. I don't know. Mm. You're just, you're not getting me. I just don't think you're understanding the history behind what I'm about to do. Mm. And then I get on a call with Abrams. Now Abrams are one of the they're one of the top publishers in New York. And I get on this Zoom and it's me and Bridget and one other person in Abrams. And then the all these other people just start joining the Zoom. And Bridget's looking at me like they didn't tell me. Mm. So five women. So we got head of marketing head of whatever, they all wow. join this Zoom. And I've got these five women in front of me, me and Bridget. Bridget's like, oh, oh, didn't realise. Huh? Everyone was coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This Zoom was an hour. Wow. Wow. And I knew this, this was, right. was it. <sighs> now, listen, like where the show sits right now, <clears throat> people don't know, but where the show, where the home is, it's Madame Noir. YouTube, Madoir.com. Now, Madame Noir is a social platform that's created for black female entrepreneurs. Now, that's where my show sits. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect. Spot on. And then I go into this meeting with Abrams and it's my my team's five women, Mm. United Nations. And I'm like, let's just keep the girl power going. I mean, this is, this is obviously, this is what we're doing. Mm. This is what we're doing. Mm. So it's like female empowerment. And I instantly already know, but play it cool. Mm. And the bridge is like, you know, well, we've got to think about it. We've got a few more mm. meetings mm. we've got to do. I get off the phone and but I'm like, you know, yeah. you know. I get off the phone. I'm like, Bridget, <laughs> yo, I don't even want to do those other meetings if I'm honest. We, yeah, yeah, we've got this. Yeah, like, yeah. I know this is where, like, they it's like buying a new house. They got it. Like knowing. You just know. They studied me. So they Did were they? like saying things in the meeting, and I was like, oh, yeah, we saw when you posted about blah, blah, and your dad. I love and, that the most. And, and I'm yeah. just like, yeah. None of the other meetings. No. I was just another cookbook. They weren't invested. No, they weren't, they weren't invested. invested. And they were talking about all this other stuff. Mm. They're like, yeah, we've got to do like a, we should do like a bonus thing on the cookbook where you add a voiceover to some of your recipes mm. and that'll be the bonus option. So we're going to do like a, an Amazon voice app Great thing. Idea. And the, yeah. the, the things that, the way you and I think, mm. 
was exactly how they think. Yeah, it's beautiful. And they were like, with your book launch, we should do like a live cook in all of the water stones. And, and I'm just like, what? Yeah, that's crazy. It's not just a cookbook. It's yeah. more than that. I don't like cookbooks, babe. I hate cookbooks. It's the most boring thing on the planet to me. So this one's going to be sexy as fuck. Get in. <laughs> Yeah. And if the title of her album, Pinky Ring, has got anything to go by, this is if she means what she says. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the next step now. Wow. Delving into this cookbook. And um, I can also talk about this next bit too. Do it. Because, you know, I can because it hasn't happened. But by the time yes. we do this... Um, Be free. Be free, child. So there's this, so there's this, there's this festival called um, Vegandale. Mm. And it's the biggest festival in the world. Started off in Canada, in Toronto, because there is a vegan village in Toronto huh. where it's just a little village full of vegan restaurants and vegan stores. Wow. And then they built the festival from that tiny little couple of blocks, this what village. What a beautiful experiment. It's yeah. amazing. And every year, I go every year, take Emmy. Mm. It's got the best vendors and they do it everywhere. They do vegan Dale. LA, Toronto, Chicago, New York, they travel the whole of America cool and do one fuck. day and we're four to six thousand people. Yeah. And every year the he the headliners get bigger and bigger and bigger. And this year they put out this um this press release. And I wait for it every year, because it's in Randall's Island, which holds about seven, eight thousand people. Oh. And all the best vegan food vendors from New York go there. So you get the best vegan fried chicken, the best vegan soul food. They pull up vegan mm -hmm. donuts. They pull up. And this festival is they have a big stage. It's nuts. And I've just always gone as a, you know, mm. not a, a spectator. And me and Amy go and just overly indulge and eat and have fun and meet all my vegan community. Mm. And I went last year and it was great because it was the first time because I don't go out. So no one really sees me outside of... Mm social mm -hmm. and I got to meet my tribe mm -hmm. so it was really sweet oh, just man. getting to just you know, take pictures yeah. and share stories yeah. and, and I loved it yeah. and I realized that I need to bridge that gap mm. I need to be, I need to be out there more and I've been doing that more this year now just shying away from that whole kind of social thing but mm. I'm getting better at it mm. and they called so they put this press release out this year and they said vegan down New York Headlining, Rick Ross, the biggest fur-loving, anti-vegan artist you could ever imagine to head the biggest vegan festival in the world. Everybody goes nuts. nuts. They're like Bananas. saying they're going to boycott Vegan Dell. They're not going. How could they do this? All the, the, the papers, the social. And I'm like... Wait a minute, people. Mm. So now we've got to have only vegan artists performing at Vegan Dell. Is that mm. what are we, we're ostracizing now? Yeah, yeah, Is that yeah, what yeah, we're yeah, doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not cool. I said, no, that ain't cool. No. no, 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 no. Okay, yeah, Rick Ross is doing it for a paycheck and now Coyle Ray is doing it. Styles P does it every year because mm. he's the vegan goat. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, it's a vegan festival. It's outdoors in Randall's Island in the summer in mm. New York. Mm. 6,000 people. $35. Now, if we can get all of Rick Ross's audience and Coil exactly. Ray's an TikTok audience. It's an alley -oop. It's an alley -oop. What? It's a hookup. It's, it's the biggest hookup. Now, they're just coming to see their artists because yeah. they're fans. But they're going to get hungry. Yeah. And they're going to get thirsty. Come on, this is ingenious marketing. And there's only one kind of cuisine they can eat. Yeah. And that's the plant-based lifestyle. It. Come on, it's a win. And they're going to just indulge. They don't even know. know. They're going to indulge in the most delicious food they've ever All had. about it. So, so a big social media platform reached out to me and said, how do you feel? I said, I think it's a fucking great idea. Mm. Would you be willing to put out a press release for that? Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm known for doing that. So I'd do it. <gasps> Vegan so delicious is pro. Da -da. I said, I stand by it. Mm. I stand mm. by it. And then Vegan Dale see it and then they call me up. And they're like, Charlize, like, thank you so much. I said, I didn't do it for you. Mm. I just spoke my truth. Mm. That's how I feel. Mm. There's just no judgment from mm -hmm. me. It is what it is. It is still a business at the end of the yeah. day. And they were like, no one has been for it. And your voice has just, it has really helped. Mm. We've never had... 
a female host in Vegandale. Hosts, you know, host. Would you be down for hosting Vegandale and bringing on Rick Ross and Coyle Rain, all the artists in the evening? <sighs> I was like, sorry? Oh, my God. Okay. Stop it. <laughs> Not knowing what I'm saying yes to. Oh my god! So that's in a couple of weeks, but obviously once you guys see it, maybe it's happened. You'll see it. It's you live. Know, we'll oh. share it. You'll see it. But that's on the 16th of September. Wow. Maybe it's come. Maybe it's gone. Wow! But I am so excited yeah. just to represent Vegan So Delicious and represent the Black Vegan Cooking Show. I'm going to have a tent there yeah. where I'm going to do a live. I'm going to be filming a live episode it's of the Black Vegan Cooking Show. Yeah, six. Fa- they've sold six thousand tickets already. So um, that's going to be beautiful. Then I've got to get Rick Cross on the show. Hey! hey. Oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm excited about that. Wow. Um, so I'm just keeping the wheels moving, babe. What a future. Just keeping the wheels moving and get stuck into my cookbook. And that takes a long time. That's a whole year process. Yeah, of My course. book won't come out for a year. But you're building as you go. Level by level, layer by layer. Yeah. This is, yeah. and, and that's what, I mean, this is quite a comprehensive podcast, to be honest. Like, I, mm, right. You've gone right from the beginning to now. And what, what I am sensing is that you're very, there's a self-awareness there about what, um, what's possible. I don't feel like there's any, uh, you know, there's no, there's no uh, hazard lights on. There's no, there's no. one road. It's like, you no. you know exactly what, and everything is for a reason. Everything is, yeah. Absolutely. I love it, I love it man. Absolutely. I mean, there are things that have come my way that I've just passed on yeah. that would have really elevated yeah. my social presence or but I'm just I'm just not here for yeah. that I'm just not in it I've been there and done it and worn the t-shirt and I'm just living in my purpose now and it's like whoever's going to rock with me is going to rock with me mm. whoever's not then that's cool mm. you know I'm just I'm no longer pleasing others mm. and it's nice to be in that space mm. and that future of yours is just so man just putting your head in the mindset of and just exactly and it's you know I've said a lot and dropped a lot and sh- and you know and but it always feels like there's never enough happening and yeah, more yeah, needs to be yeah. done it all sounds wonderful and looks wonderful <laughs> when it's presented as you know very well mm. um, it's, it's all the cogs and machines going yeah, on behind the there's scenes still to, so, so much, much to be done I've done nothing there's nothing like this I haven't even you know put my toe in the ocean yet but, that's what but I like. feel like that's what we're like. I think we're always going to feel that way yeah. as creatives. Hungry, never enough. You always feel like it's not enough. Never you know? enough. Especially when you're doing something like you and I where yeah. we're, it's community. Yeah. You know, you always feel like because there's always a constant struggle, there's always constant stuff that needs to mm. be done. But, you know, mm. we're getting there. Certainly are. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Goes without saying, if you need to tune in and cop out, you definitely need to go to Vegan Soulicious on Instagram and with loads of books and loads of things and all these different uh, opportunities for you to discover. I'm really glad you started here on a Killer Killer podcast. Me too. <laughs> Charlie's right. No, I can't believe I'm here. I'm going to end up watching myself on his podcast. Yeah. Hey, the favour will be returned. I'll be in New York soon enough. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast, Ala in was out of fashion, street coach, TV in effect, new presenter inside the place, Charlie Shrookwood. Uh, listen, Sharon is caring, so tell a friend to tell a friend. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Hey, you stay lucky and don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Take care of yourselves, people. Peace. 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 <laughs> <laughs>